Hi, this is Jonathan Bennett. Welcome to The Effective Educator. As teachers, we've all seen documents that look something like this. These uh, notice and naming sheets, i am put them up on the screen right now. We might use these for observing an whole classroom, taking notes on them. Administrators particularly enjoy these learning coaches because they don't need to know the names of every single student in order to identify who's where and who they're giving feedback on. Um, as teachers, though, there's a lot of potential here, but these are not actually very ideal. First of all, if you don't have neat handwriting that is also small handwriting, uh, that's, these are not going to work very well. I can capture a maximum of 10, maybe 15 words, if they're short words, uh, about a student in a given class. Um, that does not help. Uh, there's, it's very limited in what you can capture. Number two, uh, physical space. You've got to store these things somewhere. If you have four classes a day, you have 90 class, 90 class days in a semester, you're looking at 360 of these things. You need to organize them, you need to be able to find them. They can't just be a stack on your desk because then they're useless because the whole point of these is to be able to go back in time and look and see what is going on, what's happening in your class. Um, and you can go through and you can look at this and you're looking at the sheets, right? And let's say that I'm going through here and I'm following up on Rob Thomas. I'm looking at the notes that I've taken about Rob Thomas. And I see a comment here about uh, his task, his project being stalled because it's caught on a question of alternative tuning, if this is, let's say, a music theory class. Um, and then wait a second, didn't I just see that uh, John Resnick's stuck on the same thing? Now I, do I need to go back and check and see, is anybody else that's having trouble with this issue? Um, this is a serious concern that this does not help with. Um, you're losing information with these. So instead, I'm going to recommend that you use a tool called LogSec. And I'm going to demonstrate LogSec to you right now. This is LogSec. And you can see LogSec here on this computer. When you first install LogSec from the link that you'll find down in the description, uh, it'll open up this demo graph right here. Now you don't want to use this because this demo graph is not real. Nothing that you use, type in here is saved. Um, you can get back to this and this could be helpful. You can find it online. It's a helpful resource for learning LogSec. But today I just want to show you directly how to deal with this. We're going to click add a graph, um, which is going to take us to this page here. And it will show you how it's going to save the work. But the important thing is here, we're going to choose a folder. Now in my case, I have already created a graph here called new graph. If I just go up, you can see I've put this in my documents folder. If you have not yet created one, you would create a new folder. We might call this 21 or 22, 23 school year, right? I recommend making a new one for every school year. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to actually fall back on new graph, the one I've already created. But if I were going to do this, I just click here and click open. And when I open this up, here is the graph I've already put in. This is the same information from those three days of work. It's the same information, but input into LogSec. And we can see here, as we look through this, that there are notes uh, going all the way back here to the 13th. The 10th is actually a previous recording I did about demonstrating LogSec in this uh, particular graph. Um, and I've got notes on each one of these kids. We've got Kate Russo Thompson and Maya Iverson were late absent on the 13th. But then I can see later at 9.05 that she arrived late. Kate Russo came in eventually. Uh, I can see here notes on Rob Thomas being off task and then getting himself on task here after a long redirecting conference here. And I can see all of these different notes here. I, might, I can go ahead and add a new note. Uh, let's say that if we look at this, um, Kate Russo Thompson has been absent or late two days, so she's requested an extension. She wants to turn her work in, in tomorrow. So I'm going to make a note of the time. I type in slash time and hit enter. It'll give me the time. And we just start her name with a hashtag. Now we're going to see the benefit of hashtags here in a second, but I want to show you the data entry first. If I type enter, it'll put in Kate Russo Thompson's name here. And I'm going to say requested uh, extension until tomorrow. She needs until tomorrow to turn in her project. Uh, and I want to put the date in, so I'm going to type in slash again. The slash opens up all of our different commands here. Now I could type in tomorrow, and tomorrow is just going to drop us right into there, and boom. Now you'll notice that tomorrow the date there has those two brackets around, the, around it. That makes it a link. I can click on a link and go there. So if I hit enter to step off of this, all of these will, will update. And you can see here's a link that jumps forward to this day. And it shows me this linked reference, which is really powerful. Because watch what happens here. If I click on Kate's name, 
This is every reference that I have made to Kate. I can see that she's been absent twice, she's been late twice, uh, the absence on the 14th was excused though, so there is that. Uh, I can look and see who else has been absent. I can click on the word absent here, and this brings up Kate Russo Thomas has been late, and I can also see that Maya Iverson was absent on that day. If I come back to my journals by taking journals over here, uh, I might take a look at Rob Thomas here, and I see I've noted him off task a lot, and I realize that actually I probably should have been tracking off task as something that I want to be able to, to check for data on. So if I come into this and I click on one of these, I can actually change this, add a hashtag off task. What I actually need to do is replace this with a hashtag off task, um, hit enter. Now that's saved. Um, and I can come back here and I can just replace each one of these with that off task. And I can come up here and do the same thing here. And I've done all of these references now for Rob Thompson, but he was not the only one. Oh, I missed that one. He was not the only one who was off task. Um, there were several other students who were also off task. Uh, if I click on this, I can see only my notes for Rob Thompson because he wasn't there. But here's the power of this. This is actually doing a full text search of your entire graph. So if I click on this down here where it says unlinked references, I can see a note here that John Resnick was also off task. Now if I click on this here, I can add a hashtag and just come to the end and delete the K and hit enter. And I've now updated that. That's now a linked reference as well. I have to leave the page and come back to it in order for it to actually move up to the top. What do I see here now? I don't have any unlinked references. This allows me to search through my work and search through all of these notes for all of these students. Uh, as a computer science teacher, I sometimes will have 50 different projects running at a time. And I want to keep track of the student progress on every single one of those so that I can sit down with those students and say, wait a second, you told me two days ago that this is where you were, uh, but now you're actually not there. Particularly helpful with group projects because I can have one person say, oh, well, this is the part of the coding that I've done. And then two minutes later, the next student comes over and says, well, this is the part of the coding that I've done. And I can say, well, that's interesting because actually uh, your friend just said that they did the same bit of coding. So this is a powerful tool that you can pick up uh, and use. Um, and it doesn't take a lot of work, as you can see, uh, very simple to use. So uh, if you like this video, please hit subscribe uh, and hit like so that more of this gets recommended to more people. Thank you.